Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this movie is to explain a project I've been working furiously on for an independent studies course at uh, the University of Utah. It's a course uh, I took in the film department with Lian Fan Shen, and it's about using Max MSB Jitter to uh, manipulate visuals. And um, what I need to do in this particular video is explain, at least to Lian, uh, how this all works and what I've accomplished here. Now, um, what you see on this screen is the uh, is the patch that I've created in uh, Max MSP slash Jitter, as well as the uh, frame of the video here. But I'm going to back up a little bit and just show you some of the background stuff. Now, there's a couple of things. First off, I'm going to go back to the uh, Finder here. These are the files I have on my computer and um, these are the files that I'm sending over on a flash drive. There's a folder here called Hello World uh, because it's about a dance Hello World that uh, my wife and I created for Repertory Dance Theater in Salt Lake. And in that you have a copy of the patch. You also have a Max runtime app. Now, um, if you don't have Max uh, version 6, this will allow you to run patches created in 6. It also has the, the same set of videos that the patch refers to. But I've also created a standalone application right here for Mac. Um, and if you just double click on that, um, it should open up just fine. So you can try either one, uh, see which one works better. But um, this is what we have here. I have a patch and then I have nine short videos. Um, an introduction, uh, the beginning of the piece, and then there are basically seven solos and there's a uh, conclusion. And it's, uh, it's under 12 minutes total. Um, but when you open it up, if you double click on the uh, Max patch itself, what you get is this. This is what it looks like in presentation view. And uh, I've got the title, I've got a little bit of introductory information, and then I've got a uh, video controller. I've got a drop-down menu that allows you to select the videos that you want to listen, uh, that you want to start with. And actually, if you select one, it starts playing it immediately. Now, you can't see it right now because the video is showing in a separate box, and I just have to uh, come up to Windows. And there's the window. Um, you can make the, uh, the patch itself, you can you know, reduce it in size. I'm trying to get to the bottom corner here. You can make the patch smaller in size like this so you can see the both of them at once. Or I can also show you can do the video full screen. Also, if you've got two monitors, I've got my laptop and this external, I can put the patch on my laptop and run the um, and run the video itself on full screen on the external, which is a nice setup. Um, I needed to explain just a couple of things. Um, you see that I've got this this picture here of a thing called a nano control. Now that's an actual physical uh, controller, and it looks like this. It's a it's a it's not big. It's about 12 inches wide and about three inches tall. You know, weighs a few ounces. It's made by Korg, um, and actually, it uh, what's wonderful is that uh, Max has been developed and to make it possible to use the nano control. Uh, within the uh, patches. Now, there's a built-in version uh, with something called a Vizi for jitter, but it's made for the old version of the Nano Control, the version one, and I've got version two right here, and it's different. Uh, fortunately, I found a kind soul who had developed a uh, version of it to be used with uh, Nano Control two. So that's what we're gonna be using because the whole purpose of this is actually is we're running the videos and then you use the physical controller to manipulate the video. Um, I wanted to explain a few things about the, uh, the patch right here. So I'm gonna make it big for a moment. Now this is presentation view. And if I put it into patching view, you know, it looks real different. Um, this is all the stuff that I put together here. This is something that is able to uh, track down all the videos and load them. Um, this is something that hooks up to the keyboard. Well, actually, let's come over here. This is the nano control patch. Now I've taken this patch and I've modified it a little bit uh, by deleting some of the uh, extra stuff I didn't need and, and adding a whole bunch of wireless sends and receives for each of the buttons like you see right here. Um, 
when you use this, it is possible that you will need to do a little bit of setup first. In fact, let me go back to uh, the regular view here. You see right here where it says setup. If you double, whoops, double click on that, um, specifically specifically for for Leanne because I'm sending over my controller. You need to double click on this and make sure it says nano control. Yep, that's good. And then you need to double click on this and make sure it goes to the second one. That's important. And then this one, you want to have it on toggle. Um, if you do momentary, it, it skips over videos in a, in a weird way, even though I'd rather have it do momentary. So once we got that, you can press send. We're good to go. Um, let me explain a little bit more about the patch. So here's all the nano control stuff. It's really just a way of mapping all the, the knobs and the sliders and the buttons. Uh, I don't use all of them, but I've left them all on there uh, with sends. And then what we've got over here is a drop down menu that has the movies. And we've got the movie player, and this just reads all of it. This creates a standalone application that I've uh, saved separately. This allows you to turn off all of the effects that I add. This, um, when this is working properly, this will immediately go from the first video to the next video to the one after that and not loop around when it gets to the last one. On the other hand, I've noticed there's so many things on this that sometimes work correctly, sometimes they don't. Um, all of them have worked correctly at least once. Um, the idea is that it will automatically load the first movie, which I've numbered zero because uh, Max does its lists starting at zero. And you see I've got this thing that says load mess load message and it says to start at zero, but for some reason it usually starts with one, so you might have to back it up manually. Um, and then this is just a way of linking up the controls on the uh, nano control. And then down here, these uh, five things are Visi modules, which are just convenient ways of using jitter effects, but they make it very easy to hook up the um, the nano control through the wireless receives here through the dials and whatnot. And then down at the bottom I've got another menu I created that allows you to select uh, window size. Uh, that's the full size of the original video, half size, quarter size, and then a, 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 um, a full screen button. Anyhow, I'm going to uh, go back to the regular view. Everything falls into place. And I'm going to make this, uh, maybe I'll make this a little smaller right now so we can see the other window at the same time. And I'll just close that one. Okay, so there I've got my... I'll close that too. So there I've got my patch and I've got my video window. And in theory, what happens is it starts playing when it loads. And it's, it's supposed to start with movie number uh, zero, the intro. I'm just going to go like this and select it. And you can see now that it's starting. Uh, what this is, is a... is uh, live video of the performance at the Rose Wagner Theater back in October of 2012. Um, I did the projections and I did the sound design and my wife did the choreography along with the dancers. The videography and the editing is by Lynn Wimmer who works for Repertory Dance Theater now. Okay, so this was supposed to go seamlessly into the second one. It didn't, but that's okay. You just press on the track, press the forward button. You can see that on the little version it's, it's right here. I just press forward and it goes into the next video. Oh my goodness, it went all the way to seven. I do not know. Okay, that goes to one, so I had to bounce around a little bit. Something weird was happening. But there's the video, and then the point of all this is that you can use the controller to manipulate the video. So for instance, here's Aaron dancing, and one of the things I can do is if I can press the, the top button right here, I can turn on the sketcher module. And if I do the first knob, I can manipulate the amount of contrast. And if I do the slider up and down, it goes from the positive to negative. Now I can add on to that, or I can just turn that one off for a moment. And I can go to the second row here, which is going to do the pixelator effect. I can press that one and I can do the knob and the slider to adjust the degree of pixelation on the X and Y axes. Looks like the video stopped, so I'm going to hit the, uh, the skip over to get to the second one. I'm going to turn that effect off. Um, the third one 
does a cropping effect. So I press the top button on the third column and I can adjust cropping with the knobs and the sliders. You can see the sliders and the knobs moving over there. The cropping effect is kind of weird. It, it worked a little better the other day, so I'm going to turn that one off. Um, the fifth one, if you skip over because the, uh, the cropping took the third and fourth, if you go to the fifth one, we turn that on, we actually get a feedback thing. And if we're lucky, there we go. You can adjust Is it on? There we go. Feedback is on, but it, it maxes out pretty quickly. But it works with the slider and with the knob. And I just have to not, you know... There we go. We have the wide out. Woo! Come back a little bit. I'll just turn that one off. If I can. Okay, when all else fails, come up to this button right here and say all effects off. And that should do what we need. And go to the next movie. Um, if I hit the fifth button, that turns on the uh, recoser, which lets me adjust brightness. Except it doesn't seem to be doing it right now. So I've discovered with a lot of these, you got to press them more than once to get its attention. Let it know that you're doing what you mean. Hmm. Strange. It indicates that it should be working right here. Uh, by the way, the last knob on the right is the volume. So I've got the volume there. Let me try this uh, slider. Ooh, there's the uh, there's the one control, and then I can do the uh, fifth button on the bottom, and that turns on a way to manipulate. Actually, that's the burkoser. Let's go through to the next movie and can manipulate that by moving the three sliders at once. And I'll just do the whole thing full screen now. Okay, so anyhow, this is my project in which I am manipulating video. I'm going to turn on the uh, sketcher too because that one's fun. I like that one a lot. Anyhow, um, Everything has worked at least once. Some things you got to hit them a couple of times to make them work or get it manually. Um, but considering this is my first major project it, with uh, Max MSP Jitter, I'm very happy with the way things have gone. And um, thanks for watching.